Oh, I sure hope, I sure hope I don't see any dead bodies. Oh, dead bodies, they... Dead bodies really creep me out, you know? Just, just really creep me out! Ugh, dead bodies, ugh! Mike, what? Mike, what? Mike, what? Mike, what? Mike, what? What? Mike, what? Mike, yeah. Relax, it's Christmas. <gasps> it is Christmas, that means I won't see any dead bodies. And hopefully not clowns either. Happy Christmas season screamings, everybody! Welcome to B-Movie Mania. We watch a karate Christmas miracle. Roll the tape! Woo! Season's creamy! Oh, oh, oh. Welcome to the crossroads of camp. The bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Everybody, welcome to this ho special holiday video episode and sound episode. If you're listening on the audio, that's all cool too. Uh, old school listeners, uh, welcome to B Movie Mania, where I'm I'm your host so this this time, Michael Hayes, and with me are my little reindeers. I've got Mr. Paul Brooks. Mike, why didn't you tell me you were at the theater trying to make a constitutional argument about guns? <laughs> Sorry, some things are private. Uh, Chris Hudson. Chris, oh, you're working out, Chris. So it's great audio. This is great, great audio for our listeners. So for the listener, Chris Hudson. I'm strong. There he is. He's he's doing sit-ups in his chair, which seems to defeat the purpose of sit-ups, honestly. <laughs> yeah, just trying to be like the kid. And with me, with us as always, is Jay. Do I look like Jay? Yeah. Do I look like AJ? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Jay's a letter of the alphabet. Okay. I don't look like a letter. It's also a bird, as in blue Jay. It's and true. I'm not blue. Well, no. Do I look blue to you? Huh? No. You trying to call me blue? No. No. How would you like it if I called you W? It'd be weird. What's up, Mike? <laughs> oh, hi, Jay. That was a bit from the movie. Do I look like Jay? Hey, Mike. What? I'm drinking some Santa's butt. Oh, goodness. I'm gonna We're crack it open oh, right now. Oh, crack oh. it open, Paul. We, oh, yeah, we all, we all have some holiday cheer here. Yeah. Let me finish this can of, of not holiday cheer real quick. Uh. Ooh. That is awful. What are you doing, Ooh. Paul? I can't get I can't get Santa's butt open. Are you slamming it? What? Do you, I'll try to help you, Paul. You gotta get real deep in there, Paul. Okay. There you go, Paul. Uh, <laughs> Santa's been working out too. All right. Maybe oh, oh, oh. maybe you could use a little fistmas, Paul, to help you open it. <laughs> oh, look, I almost got that today. Look at this beautiful this Santa. This Santa will help you. And he's wearing a barrel. Why Hell is, yeah. Why is Santa wearing a barrel? Is Dude, he going make down sure his Niagara big old Santa dick ain't out. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, how's it taste, Paul? How's my butt taste, Paul? Oh, let me take my let me take my first swig right here. Take a oh. swig of that, Paul. Oh yeah, you like that. You like that Santa's butt, don't mm, you? Drink it down. Drink it down. Mm, take yeah, drink. Take right in the drink mouth. Of that Santa's butt. Mm, oh, yeah. it's, it's oh yeah. You know what? <laughs> it's creamy. Speaking of creamy, I've got a nice <laughs> bottle of Seasons Creamings right here. Oh what? Oh, yeah. Seasons Creamings, everybody. That kind of just mm. looks like a label slapped on top of something else, like a... like. Yeah, that's official. I want to say a bottle of Malort for some reason. No, nah, that's official. The lighting's mm. not great for it. Does Jetsons pay Mike for every every one of these? This this is just a bottle of something called Seasons Creamings. It's not nothing suspicious about it. It's not a <sighs> it's not a tasty Chicago swill water. I need some whiskey, and I, a bourbon, or I just need a drink now. Oh, uh, we watched 
a movie that came out in 2019 called A Karate Christmas Miracle <sighs> by Julie Kimmel, directed screenplay by uh, someone. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, do do we say what it's about? <laughs> I don't think you really can. I does someone want to give it a try in like two sentences or less? I can try. All right, Paul, give it a give it a swing. Give it a okay. Christmas swing. Okay, hold on. Let me take one more sip of Santa's butt here. Oh, okay. You're gonna need it. <laughs> a father goes missing. A kid is convinced by visions, uh, psychic visions, that he needs to <laughs> get a black belt by Christmas Day in order to bring his father back. Uh. But his mom is working too much and doesn't understand what's happening. And Eric Roberts my, is, oh. is in some sort of movie theater. <laughs> I, this, how'd I do? You know, That's the buzzer. Paul, I might be able to help you out. Um, can we put a still of that Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia as conspiracy map? Can we just put, <laughs> put a still of that over here right now? Because that's yeah. this movie. Yeah, it is uh. it is a web of what the fuck Ooh. else could you cram into this movie? We will haunt these victims. We'll haunt their minds, their dreams, even the very land they walk on. There's very little actual Christmas in this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not much at well, all. Well, the kid needs to get his black belt by Christmas. No, I know. Mm-hmm. There's like... Is, is there anything more Christmas than that? <laughs> Christmas is a deadline in this movie. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> hey, Mike. Yeah, Paul. Um, I was worried that somebody was going to take my uh, introductory line, so I came up with a backup, but I kind of want to say it anyway. I think you have to reintroduce okay. him. Okay, Paul, you say your thing. Oh, wait, yeah, I'll reintroduce you. Okay. And Paul asks Brooks. Applesauce <laughs> is amazing these days. <laughs> Applesauce is amazing these days. It's the new Jello. All right. All right, now it's time for quick takes. Quick takes. Uh, Chris? Uh, you know, I'm going to call, I'm going to go ahead and, as part of my quick take, call all of you out as liars because there's no way you can fit your feelings about this movie into a quick take. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that was a nice quick take. Jason Halls. It is the best Christmas movie featuring Slipknot that I've ever seen. (laughs) Paul? Who is the star of this thing exactly? (laughs) What? What is the hierarchy here? <laughs> According to IMDb, the top star is um, <laughs> Anne Barshall, who played Laura. <laughs> the IMDb for this movie is an absolute mess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. So how does this movie start, uh, Jay? <laughs> the movie starts with Jesse... Which, who I think should be the main character, but somehow isn't. Yeah. Practicing reciting his uh, presidents, and mom <laughs> wants him to come down and eat a bowl of salad. Okay, now I will list the last 10 U.S. presidents in order Donald Trump, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George H. W. Bush, Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter. And so he's he's reciting. We get right into it. He's reciting the uh, uh, the presidents because he has this board of this to do list, this giant thing, and that's where he says he has to get his karat black belt in like five days and go through like eight different belts in order to bring Dad back. That's right. So just just right in right up front. There's the thing. Last year, Dad told me that if I did everything on the list, I could have whatever I wanted for Christmas. And this year, all I want for Christmas is for Dad to come home. Oh, Jesse, we've talked about this. You know that Daddy isn't coming home. Jay, did you say that if he gets a black belt in karate, his dad will come back? That is correct. Mm. His dad is missing. 
We learn his dad uh, is missing because mom is setting the table. Just like the opening scene is her setting the table, yeah. and then her about to set the new table, the new the last place that, and she goes oh, and then turns and it it's around. It's been a year. It's been a year, yeah. and she's she gets out that extra place setting still, and is like. Huh. But you will set the t- well. You've never set the table either, have you? No, no, no. Well, I just buy you'll, food you'll never and have bring that problem then. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, oh, so boy. we learn real quick that Jesse Genesis is his name. The family's surname is Genesis. Yeah, by what the way. is that? It's a surname. They love Peter Gabriel. I don't know. Uh, Bob Genesis. <laughs> yeah, it is Bob Genesis, ain't it? Um, <laughs> Uh, but we learned, we learned real his, quick. His IMDb says Robert Genesis. Oh, well, no, there is proper. a thing in the movie where they argue about that. So <laughs> his middle name is Book of. Hmm. <laughs> they don't ever say it, but Robert Book of Genesis has with his son, Jesse Book of Genesis Jr. Yeah, of course. Um, yes. <laughs> where he makes a 12 days of Christmas list and then he gets his, his, his <clears throat> biggest wish comes true. That's like the bit. This list, it's all scrawled out on a whiteboard on his wall, right? But yeah. every day, all 12 days, one of them does say, the last 10 presidents in order. But on that same day, it also says, earn a black belt by Christmas. <laughs> and there are some that only say that. Multiple of them say So it's not really a list of 12 things. But here's the best thing. There's a couple that are kind of big blocks of text. And maybe there's a screen cap here if you're watching. Who knows? One of them starts out, they're hard to make out, but I caught the first three words of one of them. And I need to know how you guys would finish this to get your loved one back. Okay. One of the things on the list starts with these three words. Recite lyrics of, and I can't read the rest, but what song do you think he needs to be able to, from memory, recite the lyrics of to get daddy back? I bet it's beat it. You think beat it? All right. Beat it. Yeah, because that's at this point. That's what I thought his dad did when, for the last year. I got, I got, I got it, Mike. What is it, Paul? Um, I'm gonna go with the entire motion picture soundtrack to Vision Quest. That's it. <laughs> Now I want to hear a song that is the entire motion picture of Vision Quest. Can't do it. Can't do it on YouTube. No. Well, that's fair. Jay, you got one? You got one that brings Daddy back? Baby's got back. Oh. <laughs> he's, hey. he's, got back. he's up there. Trump. Obama. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other hey, brothers can can't just, deny. Can, I, can yeah. I just take this opportunity to say real quick, Abby in this movie... She she um she got some junk in that trunk. Was that mom? <laughs> you talking about that mom? Oh That's yeah, mom. oh yeah. You're talking about Abby Book of Genesis Junior. Yeah, Abby Book of Genesis. Thank you, Paul, for saying what we all thought. Is You're she welcome. A widow? We don't really know. Yeah, she could be. She could be a she widow. She doesn't even know. She doesn't mom. know. <laughs> There's so well, much. That's the thing about this movie that I'm. I know we're gonna get into, but just like. There's so much that she, you don't know. Yeah. That <laughs> including don't, that the characters don't know. <laughs> including anything about her husband. Uh, how right. long have they been married? He's got so many secrets. I work late a lot, but ever since his father went missing, I just, just... I am really sorry, Abby. I remember your husband, Bob. He was a really cool guy. So we've mentioned that she's a bad mom a bit here, and that is kind of one of the points. This movie takes, like, all the tropes of a Lifetime movie... And puts them together. Like, it's yeah. like, it's, it's, the mom is the classic, I work too much, I don't take time for my family. And then, yeah. what, dad's gone, mass shootings happen, uh, clowns. There's clowns. Cl- the clowns with the weapons. Eric Roberts is in a movie. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> Did anyone else think that their cat accidentally stepped on the remote control when Eric Roberts first showed up? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I it, thought that was a new uh, movie. I did too. I thought I'm like it. It okay. I say this with with no snark. It honestly looks like they dropped in scenes from a different movie. They did. Yes. They actually did. Huh? No. Well, I think. Well, I don't think the Eric Roberts is from another stuff. Is from another movie. But all the <sighs> little shots from the th- movie theater is from, apparently from another movie that this guy did. Okay. Really? Yeah. Thank you. God. Yeah. It, 
It's so it, it that's what exactly what I yes, I'm like, what is happening? Even the Eric Roberts stuff, even the Eric Roberts stuff, when it cuts into him, he's saying all these words in a really dramatic tone, like like Eric <laughs> Roberts can. Yeah. And y- <clears throat> your brain is like trying to go, okay, what is he talking about? Because this is foreign from everything I've just and, seen. And he's and, talking to but, a lone woman in an empty movie theater. Right. And like you're trying to figure out what it is and you can't before the scene is over. They can ask why, but they'll never understand. The people they hear about on the news, they won't understand. Only those that come here tonight will finally see what it's like. What it's like to be destroyed by someone you thought was exactly like you. One thing I loved about the dream, do you think Jesse dreamed those newspaper clippings? I don't know. I don't know. Well, no, we find out that's why he's, well, that's why mom thinks he's having the dreams because he took the newspaper clippings of of his dad's disappearance at the end of a mass shooting at a movie theater. So that's how he found out dad was kidnapped, maybe? But here's the question. What did mom fucking tell him? Like, (laughs) what did she say to him? What did she say? Your dad's dead. I can dead. tell you. No, there's not going to be a funeral. I can tell you, Mike, that she didn't tell him that he was at a movie theater to <laughs> argue constitutional rights about guns. But also a well, birthday see, party in a horror movie. <laughs> so see, there's so many reasons he was at that movie theater and he's not coming back. I yeah, she just said there. he's not, you know, he's not coming back. Mom, I'm tough. I don't mean by karate. Mom, I'm already on to blue belt. Dad will be coming home soon when I prove that I earned my black belt. That's what I'm talking about, Jesse. Getting a black belt is not going to bring back daddy. The implication is that he, that the dad got killed in a mass shooting in a yeah. movie theater. Yeah. Yes, done by a clown or clowns. By There's a clown. A, a cult, a, Eric Roberts' cult of clowns. It, but it starts out where we don't know and we're, we only know as much as she talks to the kid about. And we're like, oh, the kid's just not accepting the fact that that his father passed away in a shooting, right? Like, this is tragic, right. this is sad. But then, like, the next scene, we find out fucking mom doesn't even know. She's like, baby, he is alive. What the <laughs> fuck? I need you to tell me if my husband is alive or dead. Mike, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm uh, sucking on a candy cane over here. It's wow, actually... I, I didn't notice, and yeah. I don't know where you are on the screen, so I can't look, but I'm going to stare this way. Okay, this way. it's... I just want to say real quick, it's it's a it's pickle flavored and it's delightful. If you want one, I can oh, send one your way. Are you trying to plug your fucking YouTube channel where you eat weird ass candy with that guy? Well, I wasn't trying to plug it, but now I'm going to put a clip of that in. Oh boy! Since you brought it up, bon appetit. Okay. Hmm. That's actually not bad. Yeah, it's actually better <laughs> than pizza. Because it's kind of pickle juice. Okay, Sorry. anyway, Chris Hudson, please explain. Yeah. So we get uh, a whole scene yeah. about, <laughs> from this law professor <laughs> who who used to, who was Playboy's Playmate of the Month, February 1986. Oh yeah, what's her name? Julie uh, McCullough, I think. If, uh, Julie off, McCullough. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, Paul, throw up, throw up. A censored image of that on the screen. <laughs> okay. And hey, you know what? We're gonna put an uncensored image on the fucking website. So go check it. Hey, uh, Ooh, yeah. or at least at least a link to an illegal <laughs> Russian site that's hosting it. Perfect. Check out <laughs> Julie naked and then buy a T-shirt. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So she's a constitutional law professor now of some sort, and she's mm-hmm. giving a crazy expletive-filled story using, I mean, she uses words like, she uses the C word, Mike, critters. Ah, she, can't, she can't say that anymore. You isn't can't it, say gr- that sort isn't of it great to hear someone joke about slurs? <laughs> it's great. Oh, it's so funny. I don't think that's what she was doing. 100% was. She I'm said, sure she was. is that, oh, is that an okay thing to say now? I don't know all these words. Like, it's like she's like wondering if it's one of the ones that's inappropriate now because you can't I say like bleep, her. bleep, or bleep. Yeah, she was the best, my favorite part of the No, movie. she was, but she was her, easy, the best ca- character. her character yeah. was making that joke. I have something for you little critters. <laughs> well, I can't call you critters, right? That ain't one of them forbidden words or something. <laughs> nah, critters is okay, but 
How about I call you my elves? Oh, no. How about my reindeer? Yeah, you're all a little reindeer, but without the horns, because I don't like horns. They kind of remind me of that devil guy, and he ain't very Christmassy, is he? <laughs> and she asks everyone a question, like gives them a list of like, which answer is it? And Jesse bursts into the, into the classroom. <laughs> None of the above. Still in his karate gi. <laughs> He's still He's in his karate his... outfit. Oh my! God. I think he wears it the whole movie. Oh, he does. He doesn't wear anything else. Now, who thinks Chris Kringle is guilty of reckless and dangerous? The answer is none of the above. Do I know you, young man? Santa Claus is guilty of nothing. He acted in defense of another. He was protecting his friend Rudolph. Yeah, I just had a realization that Jesse, once he bursts through and gets the audience's attention and the professors, he's probably out practicing karate again because he's got five days. <laughs> I'm sorry, four days left for his fucking black belt. I was he's worried gotten, about that. Dude, he's he's advancing in his belts every afternoon. Yeah, he's got a new belt. He says uh, his he gets a little bit mad at his mom at some point because she says... Uh, she refers to his sensei as a he, and oh, yeah. and and Jesse goes, "My sensei is a she." But do you ever see her? You don't you know, see anybody. I think she is. I think she's the woman that's on when when Jesse's beating the shit out of these kids to advance his belts. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's the lady that's watching. So you've got the uh, referee, okay, and then but there's a lady yeah, on the outside, yeah, yeah. outside of the ring. But, but most of the her. time, for whatever reason. You see Jesse training, which is not much, by the way. You get about no. maybe a minute 30 of karate in this entire movie. He does, he does some sit-ups. He beats up a couch. <laughs> he, he humps the floor a few times. Oh, you don't see the sensei very no. much. Yeah. You don't even see other classmates other than the one he's just whipping up on. <laughs> he chokes you don't. And, yeah, he and, chokes it out a kid. And listen, I just have to say that for a movie called The Karate Christmas Miracle... Jesse sucks at karate. He's not good. <laughs> I don't know who in their right mind would advance him so fast through those belts. That was my other question. Probably how, how is it possible? I, I it's know. not. I know how it's possible. His, <laughs> A his, miracle? His sensei knows that he really need, wants his dad back. So those uh, aren't real belts. Uh, Jesus uh, giving him like a piece of fabric to tie around. You know, and if I may, if I may, I when I was Jesse's age... I was in karate and I got a brown belt and I've never heard the stories Wait, behind what? the belts that Jesse is t was telling about what each belt means. Wait, Jay, did you really get a brown belt in karate? Yeah. All right. How long did that take you to get up to brown belt? You didn't. Uh, probably about two years. OK, that's not five <laughs> days. <laughs> well, no. Paul, Paul, don't worry. In the sequel, the Karate Boxing Day miracle, he goes back to his like yellow belt. It's not Boxing Day. No, it's wrestling. It's a karate it's wrestling, wrestling miracle is what oh, the well, sequel is called. But the day yeah. after Christmas. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, hey, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Paul. <laughs> I'm going to bust out this uh, lint. It's a lint? lint. Lint. It says lint elf milk chocolate bar. And as you can see, I'm wearing an elf hat. I'm getting into the elf spirit. So it's I'm going to... Paul, this those is, lint this chocolates is, come out of an elf's belly button. That's fine. This is this is the height of decadence right here. I'm doing it. Paul, nice. did, Paul, did, before the recording, did you go to CVS? No, I I picked this up at Schnucks. No, no, but I'm talking about Christmas VS Christmas VS. Anyway, so uh, where were Cut we? Cut that out, this? Paul. You know, hey, Mike, do you yeah. mind if I take this next part? Because I, yeah. I got a question yes. that I'd like to ask Paul. Could Jay, I this. am fucking lost. Okay. So Abby is talking to the professor, the law professor, Julie McCullough. Yes. And there is a whole backstory that comes out here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Abby was told in the past when she was young about a psychic reading she got that predicted all of this with Bob Book of Genesis going missing, everything. The psychic told me that I would get married, have one son, and that my husband would go on a journey that would be of a major concern to me. When I asked her for more, she looked unhappy and then refused to tell me anything else. That psychic was you. Look, I don't 
know who you are, because I don't remember you, okay? But nobody around here knows anything about my little psychic past stuff. The psychic that gave the reading was the law professor. Right. So she gets mad and says she doesn't want to live that life anymore, so she got into law. So at one point in time, she's she was kind of a psychic detective, if you will. <laughs> she would help the police. So yes, so Paul, you have played a psychic detective. I have in a film. I know what's going on here. You were robbed, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. I'll get your money back. I was wondering how what you thought about her performance as a psychic detective from one psychic detective to another. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I enjoyed her performance for most of this movie, but this particular scene was very off-putting because she was very angry about the entire situation. I used to help the police. They wanted me to help them find missing people, and you know what I found? I found a bunch of dead bodies. It's all I can see, and I don't want to see a bunch of dead bodies, okay? You have no idea what it's like to see dead people, and uh, it, it, it's just creepy, and it creeped me out so much that I didn't want to do it anymore. So I paid my way through law school by doing all those stupid little psychic fairs that you just happened to find me out. But I think it's time for you to leave, okay? Because I don't want to remember any of it. Abby goes in. Abby, by the way. You got some junk in that trunk, okay? okay? Did, you, right. did you see that? <laughs> yeah, we saw Whoa. it. The image you keep editing into this video for this is yeah. Whoa. weird about it. Yeah. But anyway. Oh, I'm going anyway, to I'm gonna wear out that section of the video. She, she confronts <laughs> Professor Elizabeth about this past situation where Abby, when she was 16 years old, she went to this psychic fair. Is that a thing? If there's a Ren fair, why not a psychic fair? Because... Okay, sure. <laughs> and she told him all this true stuff. She's going to have one son. <laughs> She's going to have a... <laughs> it's true. It's all true. <laughs> Professor Elizabeth... Look, as far as psychics go, Professor Elizabeth <laughs> is is skilled at her craft, and I understand that no, she's, she's trying not. to get away from... <laughs> That's the, one of the main points <laughs> of the movie. She's, she's not accurate. No, she's got, she shares these psychic visions with fucking Jesse. <laughs> hey, no, listen. Wait, what? Just because she... she hangs out a, at a gazebo and says, I don't know, beats me, that doesn't mean she's not good at her job. She just she holds She literally back. breaks down in tears at some point because she's doing it wrong. I don't do that anymore. I don't want to see dead bodies. I really think it's time for you to leave, okay? You know. What? Because I'm having nightmares? Your son is having nightmares, too. Did you know that? She told Abby that she was going to have one son, that she was going to have a husband, that was going to have a major, like, incident that was going to be a problem. She got all that right, and that's why Abby came back to her at the college, and that's why Jesse broke into her classroom to tell her everything that she was saying (laughs) about Santa (laughs) being involved in aggravated battery was wrong. (laughs) Okay. It's, it's, I, I, it's I mean, we simple can, battery. We can spin this out, but I don't want to like. I don't want to have to contend with questions like, "How did she know that this person was teaching at this university?" I don't want to do that. Yellow Psychic pages. dreams, Jay. Psychic dreams. Okay. Maybe maybe right. Jesse knew. Yeah, because Jesse yeah. Jesse seems to be touched yeah. by the same thing. Mm-hmm. Even when he's all like, "None of the above." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good impression, Chris. But why didn't you tell me exactly what happened? Because you're so young, Jesse. And I really didn't think you needed to hear all the horrible details they write in the newspapers. But why didn't you tell me Dad was at the theater trying to make a constitutional argument about guns? How did you know that? Jesse should be the main guy. Jesse knows who the villain is, which is Eric Roberts. Jesse knows what he has to do to defeat Eric Roberts somehow. I mean, because he does. I guess. And he knows he has to get this belt. So he's the guy that's going on the path yes. to yeah. achieve something. Well, he even gets So the... the movie should be following Jesse, but instead we don't know half of what the movie's about because the movie follows the mom. Yeah. Who's, well, yeah. well, do you even see Jesse? It. Jesse even gets taught how to fight from Martin Cove of Cobra Kai fame. Yes. The, the Never coach mentioned that yet. from Karate Kid... But he 
here's the thing. He's also the bad guy, right? No, no, I, okay. no, he's not. I no. was going to say, fuck you. Yes, I, he is. I legitimately <laughs> could not tell if he was a good guy or a bad guy. And I'm not I, kidding. Well, I think we can't tell until we watch this movie that footage was taken from. But I don't think he was the bad guy. He puts a fucking clown yeah. mask on. Yeah, why does he have I the think, clown mask well, on? Paul, as you find out later at this party where <laughs> that was the constitutional Second Amendment law discussion slash horror movie slash birthday no. party. <laughs> where all the all the guys wore clown masks and all the women had crazy makeup. Did he have a big speech? Why was he there? Yeah, yeah, to talk about guns and constitutional rights and stuff. The girl who owned the place had some kind of three-tiered event. A few friends first, then a meeting, and then a big party with the guys dressed like clowns and the women in some kind of wild makeup. Jay is rightfully confused about some stuff. We all we see, are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, listen. We see Eric Roberts on the movie screen the entire movie. He's never chilling at the bar with the girls or anything like that. His All his stuff was shot completely separately, right? I think in his bathroom, yeah, in his bathroom. Right, right. Say, I mean, he probably did it the same day as uh, a talking cat. <laughs> talking cat. Yeah. <laughs> but then we see, is it Martin Cove? Yeah. yeah. Yep. We see him also on the theater screen, the th- the same theater screen. Yeah. Talking to his daughter who is in the theater crying for some reason and he gives her he 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 announces to her on her birthday that he's giving her ownership of the theater and then he puts on a clown mask and laughs maniacally. So what the well, hell is happening? For, first of all, Paul, it's her party and she'll cry if she wants to. Fair. Second fair. of all. <laughs> fair. Second of all, um, I think it's to throw us off the scent of who the actual killer is in the, in the theater. I love you, Aurora. And I know you'll be great. But remember. <laughs> I will be watching you. <laughs> Eric Roberts is like supposed to be that guy, right? Even though he never wears a clown mask, right? But <laughs> but Martin that's Cove why does. I didn't know if he had followers. I think it's no, a cult. we don't know anything <laughs> we don't about. Know. No one well, knows surely, anything. Surely they will explain all of this by the end. He gave her the theater as a present on the night of the shooting, on the night Dad went missing on Christmas Day last year. Yes, and it was her birthday. From what I, by the way, I posted this to you guys last night. Allison Pregler's uh, Movie Nights channel did a video on on yeah, a it's great. Christmas yeah. it's Miracle, great. which is how I found out about this movie. Um, and she mentioned something about maybe Eric Roberts' character having worked for the Palace family at some point, and there was like a big falling wait. out. But I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. I just wait, wait, wait. I know. Wait, well, that, yes, I just, it, it all clicks. Not all, okay. no, it doesn't. I, that's, oh, he, that's, there's no way it all clicks. He was security okay. for the theater. And, and the and height the and the school. Yeah. And the school. Which doesn't yeah. mean anything, but they tie it together. And that's where Jesse, Book of Genesis Jr., says, so we have a connection. Him and Aurora have a connection. Focus. Streamline. James Whitmore was the security officer at my school. He was also the security officer at your movie theater. Me and Aurora have a bond. Why would Whitmore want to take our fathers away from us? Think about what you need. I need to get my father back. And and also, no lie, Aurora does absolutely zero in this movie. She does not do one action. She does one thing. What? She lies in the hospital bed. Visited well, by true. Bob. Oh God! All at right. At some in point dream. in time. Aurora, you woke up. Thank God. Hey, Chris. Uh, I had a question for you. Actually, you know what? I'll save that for later. Sorry, Mike. Right. Go ahead. Save it That's for okay. The podcast, so, Paul. speaking of not talking, uh, you guys remember when uh, Jesse Book of Genesis Junior decides 
Or maybe it was the script or the director or someone decided that he wasn't going to talk anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so he says he says he needs to take a vow of silence so he can focus on his dad and get his black belt. And uh, then he doesn't talk for the rest of the movie. Nope. And he just makes amazing facial gestures and humps the floor and kicks oh, the couch. Oh, the floor. I loved his reaction when his mom painted uh, the birdhouse. <laughs> oh, oh so that's good. another thing. Okay, hold on. Stop. Birdhouse. Jesse wants to paint this birdhouse with his mom. He's like, hey, mom, we paint this? And she's like, no, I got to go do stuff. <laughs> Bad mom. You know, whatever. She's always And so finally, when she's like, oh, maybe I've learned a lesson, she goes home and she paints the birdhouse. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, Jesse, look, I painted the birdhouse. He wanted to paint it with you. <laughs> yeah. He didn't want you to just paint it for him, dummy. Look, Jesse, I painted it. I painted the birdhouse. She's like, the worst mom ever. She's terrible. I also Painter like that she's painting it. She's trying to do her best, and she's like, huh, I'm pretty good at this. As she looks at it again, she goes, no, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> she brings it to work, and her boss tells her to take it back home. Yeah, yeah. Her boss rips also, on it. it was fine. It was just... yeah. It didn't look bad. It was just a fucking it shitty bird it, house. It could have used another coat of paint, but... Listen, listen. Yeah, not bad. In Abby's defense, all right, single mom now mm, because my, it, because Bob is missing. Yeah, single uh, mom or widow. Well, p possible widow, possible single mom who keeps uh, her junk Bob's, in her trunk. Bob's head shot on various <laughs> desks, but like, yeah. look. She, so I mean, she's supporting her son right now, who takes karate lessons and. It looks like he's he's. It looks like he costs a lot of money. Okay, so she has to come up with some new marketing plans for applesauce in order to keep this kid going with the, with the, with the karate. Because if she doesn't finance the karate, Bob's not coming home. Yeah, now you're thinking. Okay, and I can pull that off by making Santa Claus stir the gravy and then pour it right over the turkey for Mrs. Claus. That way we kill two birds with one stone. It's not just women in the kitchen anymore. And turkey gravy is hot on a cold Christmas day. Apart from the fact that she seems to be the applesauce marketing queen, uh, she also seems to be the John Hamm of turkey gravy, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, because she does. We do hear over. Oh, she keeps saying stuff over the phone, right? She's like, "Hey, you know, here's. Let me throw you my marketing scheme to show that she's a business person." Uh, but she does say turkey gravy is hot on a cold Christmas day, and I. It's true. It's it is true. It's like nothing's been more true. I don't think ever. So. I mean, well, I almost used it as my uh, intro. Well, as long as you guys remember that Oju is its own thing. Oh, yeah. It yeah. is its own thing. Of course. What? Prime rib? No, no, that's Oju. Oju is a whole different thing. Abby gets a call from Bob's phone and goes to a diner to pick up his phone. She thinks it's Bob for a second, by the way. She's like, Bob? Bob? Right. Well, it's, it's his it, phone. It's his phone. It's his phone. And then this guy who is just mean to her. What does he say? <laughs> just rewind the episode and listen to my intro. Yeah, just... <laughs> that's what he says. Are you Jay? Do I look like Jay? I'm sorry, I don't know what Jay looks like. Do I look like AJ? Hmm? Oh, sure, why not? Jay's a pretty common name. Jay's a letter of the alphabet, and I don't think I look like a letter. It's also a bird, as in Blue Jay. And I'm not blue. Do I look blue to you? Huh? Are you trying to call me blue? How would you like it if I called you W? Huh? I, I don't. I, uh, I'm just looking for Jay, the guy who owns this restaurant. Bob's phone was at this diner. The real Jay says, oh, he used to come here all the time and, and he helped with like legal work or something. And she's like, yeah. oh, really? Which, oh. which, by the way, when Jay, when the real Jay comes out, he apologizes for Sam's sense of humor, which implies that he heard the entire exchange <laughs> between Abby and Sam. He did. He's probably cracking up backstage. Oh, he was just rude. Hi, I'm Jay, and I apologize for Sam's sense of humor. I'm Abby. You have my husband's phone? Your pop's wife. 
also that he had a black belt, that Bob had a black belt. Oh, yeah. And she because she drunkenly says that she had no idea that he was a black belt or person person a karate guy. helper or or <laughs> even more importantly person. that he built a gazebo <laughs> yeah the, the my, my wife would know if going I built around, a gazebo. the psychic is leading her around <laughs> and saying they're just the, the mom and the psychic are just going around and she's like well bob must have been here look here's the thing and i don't know maybe he was here or not and there's this whole thing i mike i don't know where we are i mean the fact that Doesn't we matter. don't know where we are in this podcast is very <laughs> representational of, of yeah, what it's like it's, to watch this movie. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. But there's this whole thing where, like, Professor Elizabeth says the, there's this knife, right? There's this pocket knife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, like, it had something to do with karate. I don't know. I don't know. She couldn't quite figure it out. And then she calls total, her at the diner. red herring. Right after she talks to Jay, the real Jay, not Sam. What? Not Hulls? Wait, Hulls? Me? Not you, oh. but uh-huh. Jay from the diner. She talks to him, and, and she gets a call from Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is like, your husband was teaching self-defense to women at the karate center. He was using the knife. Well, what the... Okay, but it was like a real knife that you get off of, like... <laughs> QVC. What the hell was he doing? <laughs> teaching <laughs> women. Wouldn't it have been hilarious if they figured out at the end of the movie that like prof- the professor was talking about a different Bob, <laughs> and, that's, and that's why she's she like, got, she got he everything. Did all this? What do you mean he built a gazebo? What do you mean he taught self defense? And she's like, yeah, Bob. <laughs> she got everything right except the individual. I will tell you that for most of the movie. Because we don't see Bob for quite a bit in the movie. So for most of the time, I was pretending that her husband was Bob from Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun. Bob. Was I a bad wife? No. Why did he have to go to that stupid, crummy horror film in the head theater birthday party and give a speech? The drunk mom scene is... One of my favorite scenes in this movie. At the end of the movie, they're in the bar drinking, and she's like, oh, I've been such a terrible mom. Yeah, you're in a bar on Christmas Eve drinking instead of being home with <laughs> well, your son. Well, now she did now to be in her defense. No. That same night she did go, she <laughs> no. was waiting at the bed for Jesse's nightmare. As soon as he leaped yes. off and described everything, she comforted him, <laughs> laid him back down, True. and then hit the bar. True. <laughs> There's all the weird but, shit going on. She says a bunch of stuff. Uh, she does refer. She says something uh, along the lines of, I didn't know he was a karate man. Uh, I didn't know that he was a karate man. Yeah. <laughs> and that's funny. That's funny when she says or that. Or a person helper. Or a homeless person helper. A homeless person helper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very good. And the homeless people help her. She also says she doesn't like horror movies. Mm-hmm. I hate horror films. <laughs> I've got to say that the mom learned her lesson. She at least finally. No, took, no, listen, Mike. She did learn her lesson because the day before, the night before, she got him a babysitter. Yes, she did do so that. So she could go out again on so Christmas Eve and get drunk. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Hey, she learned her lesson, Mike. She's a good mom. But for she, a, she went from someone who criminally left her child home by himself <laughs> to someone who at least sort of got him a babysitter. Yeah, so he's probably not mm-hmm. sticking a fork in an outlet or yeah. doing something crazy or beating yeah, how, up a couch. How was how was he even getting to karate practice <laughs> prior to the babysitter? Probably hi- hitchhiking, walking. He probably, he get he probably put his little karate outfit in like a little bag at the end of a stick yeah. and like hitchhiked. He, you know, to, he rode the rails. But I love that, like, oh, he is just kid. like, he is, Jesse is just like, look, mom, fucking deal with it. Like, I'm getting a black belt before Christmas. Like, it's happening. And he does whatever he's got to do. It's very, uh, Jay, I think you'll agree, it's very shades of uh, uh, Willie Adama on Caprica. <laughs> Even a similar look, honestly. Similar look. That karate I'll put outfit, a picture up right here. Bill yeah. wore the red karate outfit. One of them is a karate kid. One of them is a dirt eater. 
<laughs> I want to get home to Jesse, but you said my Christmas future is here. It might have been my Christmas future, not yours, Abby. Who at the final bar scene with Mama Trunk and uh, <laughs> Mama Trunk, psych, psychic lawyer? It's a new T-shirt. Who who do they run into when when the mom finally begins to not take her job as seriously? She's got it. She's late for a meeting, a big presentation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the the professor's following her through the hallways as they go to the wrong uh, <laughs> conference room. Hold on, already it's interrupting you. Already interrupting you, sorry. (laughs) Did anyone notice those hallways were 100% Hampton Inns? (laughs) Because they were. The, I mean, I don't know if it was the brand. It was a fucking hotel hallway they were in, though. 100%. Finally, to get mom's attention, the professor says, I saw my fiance die. And that's why she really quit. That's why she quit the psychic psychic life. It makes sense. I saw my fiance die in a vision. I saw how we were going to get married and he was going to die. But, okay, so back to the bar then. But yeah, so she goes to the bar and she explains that she left because she didn't want to see her fiance die. For real. So she doesn't know if he's alive, if he's dead. Kind of the same situation we have with Bob, with the dad. But they run into him at the bar with his new wife. Yeah. And he's like, and and the new wife is totally cool about it, but the, the ex fiance is not having any of this shit. You left me at the altar, and he's ready to get out. It's, it's yeah. you know, it's what she deserved, really. I mean, it is uh, no it sympathy is, for her there. They treat it as like a uh, like what the fuck? You never followed up to see if he was still alive, and it's like fuck no. You ever watched a goddamn time travel movie? Of course you don't. She saw them die because when they were together. Mm. So if you were hoping the timelines change, you need to s- sever that. You never mm-hmm. see them again and hope they live because you do care about them like she did. And that ma- she did the she did the right thing. Like, mm-hmm. but they don't treat it that way. It's no, it's well, fucking exactly. Which, as an aside, that's why I stay on this podcast, because I foretold that if I leave the podcast, <laughs> the three of you are screwed. Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So you better hope I stick around. Wait, what? Wow. You may disappear or become an Eric okay. Roberts in a movie theater. That's, that's right. Oh. <laughs> yes, the moment you see me with a clown mask. <laughs> but you're right, Mike. Some real quantum leap shit right here. Mm, Bacula up in my ass. You know, like, and and I actually really appreciated this scene. Some people give it some crap, but you know what? If I if I found out that my fiance was going to die, mm-hmm. you might think twice about sort of you know you might say, I need to mix up the timeline a little bit. Mm-hmm. I love him so much. Abby, that I gave him up. You didn't marry him? No, I didn't marry him. I didn't want to see him die. You gotta, you so, gotta be like, I hope timeline works like this movie I've seen and not like these other movies. Like Exactly. You know. Because we've yeah. all seen Back to the Future. Right, yeah. yeah. You don't want mm-hmm. a Back to the Future 2 situation mm-hmm. where... Uh, where Biff becomes president. Anyway, I was, uh, I was I mean, going to say a uh, world. Jennifer Jason Lee has huge boobs. Is it what? Jennifer Jason Lee? And what? I think, yeah, I think in the second one, was it? Paul cut this out. And, and wait, hold on. Back to the Future 2? Two, two it yeah. A, it was Elizabeth Shue in the first one, right? No, the first, no? the second one, it's uh, Biff's, Biff's wife who's supposed to be with Marty. Oh, is that... Yeah, I don't know if it. I, it's been a it's minute Marty's since I've mom. seen it. Huh? It's yeah, Marty's, Marty's mom. mom. Right. Never mind. Cut it. <laughs> cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Let's put in a clip of Back to the Future here. So yeah, Marty's mom is not Jennifer about. Jason Lee. No. It's been like uh, twenty-two years since I've seen it. <laughs> but why? When's the last time you saw Jennifer Jason Lee do something? <clears throat> uh, I bought a movie. Uh, that she was in called Heart of Midnight because I thought it had an interesting title and I thought it looked kind of cool. Well, I think Apocalypse Now is based off that. <laughs> it is. And also, you guys might find this interesting. This is never, this has literally never been discussed before on this podcast. 
It's probably but, still not because I'm sure all of this is getting cut. This, this is going no, on this the is, bonus this is features. Staying in. This is <laughs> this staying is in because features, this is baby. serious oh, business. The font for B Movie in bmoviemania.com Papyrus. is lifted Papyrus. from the Jennifer font Jason Lee. for Heart of Midnight, the oh, movie. Nice. Look it up. Fun trivia. Nice. Thank you for trivia. listening to this wonderful segment of Christmas facts. <laughs> I oh, thought you were going to say cut for time. No, I said I Christmas thought you were going to say waste of time. <laughs> Someone wants to be Rude. the one who reveals the ending. <laughs> and I can't just I can't just let it happen. So we're going to have a we're going to have a little Christmas game. So this Oh, scene, wait who, a minute, who? Mike. Are we ser- are we seriously at the ending already? We've been at the ending for like 10 minutes. What do you Okay, what? Well, before we get to the Christmas game then, and, and this gives me time to think of what the Christmas game should be cuz I am <laughs> not sure yet. Paul, what else happens before the Christmas game. Well, let me just go through a couple notes real quick. Okay. Number one, what's with the subplot of the professor being cold at the gazebo? <laughs> <laughs> Why is she so serious about getting in the car to warm up? I She's really cold, thought Paul. that was going to be, Paul, I really thought that was going to be like the ghost of the dad. <laughs> Like he's sitting there at the gazebo because he was supposed to be there or something. She saw him there, right? Mm -hmm. It's not what it was. No, nothing happened. I'm cold. I'm going to the car. You dragged me here and now you want to get in the car? It's got a heater. Um, Number two. Why is Abby wearing a Hoboken Film Festival t-shirt? Mm. Oh, because this is from New Jersey. Mm. Okay. Fair. <laughs> Not only that, but you remember how earlier we said the, the law book was the professor's, uh, or the writer's actual law book? He's also the president of the Hoboken Film Festival. I just want to <laughs> Wait, mention what? really quick. <laughs> oh, That's hold awesome. on. Seasons creamings, everybody. Hold on. <laughs> Dude, none of you read that? None of you saw that. What's his what? name? We haven't said his name. What's it what is his I don't name? Need, I didn't I didn't write it down. It's Del Vaccio or it's something like, like yeah, Fucking yeah, someone's yeah. got it. Come on. His name was uh Ken Del, Del Vecchio. Yeah, and then his son, the the his son in the, the movie son. is his real son. Is his real son, yeah. Oh uh, Mario. Mario Del Vecchio. <laughs> Makes sense. My father was always my teacher, and I was always the student. But now, my father is my student. I must guide him home. Oh, Paul. Yeah. Also, the babysitter's name was Candy Fox, if you want to know. I saw that. that. What is up with that? Total <laughs> porn star name. <laughs> She's got a cool sweater. Wow. Like, the sweater she has is, I think someone must have made it. Like, it's very whatever. It's a very... It's cool looking. All about it. It's got some textures, but here's the beauty. I've watched the trailer to the sequel. Ooh. A wrestling Christmas miracle. Is it actually a yeah. sequel? Yeah. Uh, I don't well, know if it's like story. I don't think it's, it might be story. No, it's I not. I think it's just different a different names. thing. The, the, mm-hmm. the dad okay. and the son, uh, Robert Book of Genesis and Jesse Book of Genesis <laughs> Jr. have different names in this, so they're not. But it's still, it's still written by... Uh, Robert Book of Genesis. Yeah, Robert Book of Genesis is an Olympic wrestler. In, in it, in the font. It's it's, it's it's it involves the country of Congo. Gilbert Gottfried and and and, 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 and <laughs> Michael Winslow. Why? Michael Winslow's in I, it. Like I read, I read a Martin synopsis Holmes of back. it. Todd Bridge. I saw Todd Bridges. Is Todd Bridges is in it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a thing. Oh but, man. But it but it is crazy. the same like premise situation or not premise, but you know, eh, whatever. The point is, it exists. Rating time! No, the game. We have to talk about the end of the movie. <laughs> Do we? Yes. yes. It'll make just as much sense if no one knows what the ending is. No, we have to talk no, about this. No, we're talking this. about okay, this end we'll of the movie. We're talking about the ending. It's Name crazy. Jay. Without looking at your fucking notes, Jay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Name the first three belts. White. I might be wrong. Um, white, yellow, orange. Okay. And Chris Hudson? Uh, let me check my notes real quick. No! Uh, green, blue, purple. Okay, well, that's... Okay. Uh, Paul? White, yellow, orange. Okay, we have a tie. Okay, that is the first two. Oh, wait, first I thought three. you wanted me to, to, to name the next three. Well, no, you're no, you're wrong. <laughs> and then Paul, then Paul would have said red, brown, black to finish the... 
Oh, that would have been fun. I wasn't thinking ahead. I've been drinking some seasons cream. And... Hey, wait, red, red, brown, black. No, Thanks, Paul, Paul, you and Jay Thanks, tied. Paul. Okay, so here's what we need. What is the meaning of purple? <laughs> oh man, purple Come rain. On, you got a purple. purple rain. The purple belt represents the changing of the sky to dawn. Here, there is great advancement. It takes longer to get through purple belt than all of the previous belts. Wow. Uh, it's the it's the uh, marks I got it. the color I of the it. sunrise, the sun coming up. Yep. Like before the sun coming up. Okay, yep. Paul, what do you say? Yes. <sighs> <laughs> all right, fuck it. We're, we can't do more. I, I would love to waste time doing more of these, but... All right. I'm going to just like do each, like leading up the 12 days of well, yeah, how about this? Christmas Miracle. Paul, I'll split it with you. Put Paul, that description in. Paul, I'll, I'll start it and then I'll stop at the big moment and you can say it. <laughs> yeah, you guys work together. Do, a, do okay, an improv. Paul? Me? Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll start the ending of the this ending sequence, and then at the big moment, I'll let you say what happens. Okay, okay, all right. So <laughs> it's Christmas Day, and the family is gathered. We see some characters we've never seen before: Grandma and Grandpa. Yep. Mom is there. Oh, the professor's there too. There's no sensei. I should say. No, there's sensei's no sensei. Not there. To, the professor is there, though. The professor is there. Yeah. There is no sensei to present the black belt, but we, <laughs> from what we understand, the black belt is there. The other belts are wrapped around the Christmas tree. Around the Christmas tree. And all Jesse has to do is just snap a <clears throat> one-inch pine board in half. All right, pause. Black belt. Which is crazy because to get that that's the test to get the black belt because to get the brown belt you have to snap a kid's spine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dude, well, related to that. Related Jay, uh, yeah. uh you had a brown belt as a child. Does yes. does that track? Does it seem like you would have to break a board to get a black belt? I, I will tell you what ha what happened. Uh, I, in fact, did have to break a board that looked exactly like that. It was a one-inch pine board, uh -huh. but I did it at my first test, and it was to go from a white belt to a yellow belt. Wait, that's like, they, wait, that's the first test? You yes, said. and and they did not, they, they didn't tell us that we had to do it. So, like, you show up, and you, you know what you have to do for the test, and then yeah. they're like, oh, P.S., break this board. And you're like, oh, what? And, uh, <laughs> you, you know, you do it. Maybe so, you got a yes. black belt. Maybe you had a Maybe black belt. I do. Maybe I do. <laughs> and uh, but and and you kick it. You don't hit it with your elbow. But I mean, uh. you can. I mean, whatever. It's one inch. It's well. You know, but here's the thing. The big difference is that Jesse is getting a self-dealt black belt. <laughs> right. There's nobody to well, give it to. I'm him. telling you, there's more. This is just more evidence that his sensei is just taking pity on him and just like <laughs> yes. handing him out the belt. They're like, look, mom, you go, just kid. have him you snap go, this board. Oh, it's not a big deal. Me. Just here's the belt early. If he breaks the board, give it to him. It's, it's like, fine. It's like, are we are we sure that this isn't Jesse's make a wish mm. wish? <laughs> Jesse has terminal <laughs> cancer. <laughs> okay, Jesse. You're supposed to break this with one hit, right? So give it your best shot. Jesse jumps <laughs> up, <laughs> snaps that board in half. Paul, bring it home. Instantly. I mean, instantly. <laughs> Like WWE scripted instantly, oh. his dad slides open the patio door <laughs> and instantly walks into the house, oh. Oh. shocking everyone as soon as Jesse breaks the board. It's like a spell has been cast and his dad is back. He has escaped. I escaped. Oh, and it's with all the fanfare of like he just went to park the car and come back. Like he just is like, oh, oh, like walked right in. Well, his only line is, "I came home because I escaped." I escaped. Like, I did it. Oh, he, but that makes me wonder: Did he visit the hospital before he saw his kid? Or no, did, it doesn't matter. Did his, his kidnappers grant him leave to it, go to the it hospital. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Credits. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> but, well, okay, but a, her Christmas miracle A, he moment. did, Hudson. A, he did. And mm. B, I want to point out, A, he when he slid through that sliding glass door, he did also part those, like, 90s blinds that no one has anymore <laughs> to get yeah. through them, uh, which I thought was great. Has no emotion on his face. Does not look necessarily <laughs> excited about the whole thing. I disagree. Well, okay. He uh, looks like he wants to kill his kid. <laughs> <laughs> but but he came That's through the get back door. For real, Paul. Why why yeah. wasn't the script crack the board? Ding dong! He's at the front door because he doesn't have keys because he was fucking kidnapped. No no, he like goes around the back to do a thing <laughs> instantly. Instantly, he's there. I mean, like yeah. a quarter of a second after the board has been broken, he's fucking in. This is oh. why you need to watch this movie. I'm just saying it right now for this scene. Yeah, all, the, all the confusing buildup oh, for this fucking payoff. Astonishing. It's a miracle. It's a true Christmas miracle. Rating time. Who does anyone want to say start first? Oh well, God. what's our rating scale, Mike? Oh, we have yeah. a scale we have to do. Did you forget? Forgot that was a thing. Um, Dead bodies. Well, we're new. You at don't this. want to see any dead no, bodies. No, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh, you could do. I'm gonna give you two options. One option is you can do one out of one hundred gazebos. <laughs> <laughs> or you could do one out of out of a hundred seasons creamings. Oh god! <laughs> oh, that's it right there. Yeah. Well, that's better than deadbeat dads. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh... All right. I'll, I'll go first. Ah, there it is. I'll that's what first. I wanted. Hudson, go. Strike first. Strike hard, Chris. Yeah. No mercy. All right. So this movie is so satisfying, and it's. Yeah unsatisfaction nothing yes. about this movie <laughs> makes <laughs> sense there are <laughs> plot holes every two minutes the characters <laughs> are crazy and ridiculous the ending it, it somehow works <laughs> yes <laughs> despite being completely what the fuck <sighs> and that pretty much sums up this whole movie so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go with uh <sighs> 83 Seasons Creamings. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I uh, have a little Seasons Creamings now. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, wa- watch this movie. Well, uh, uh, movie. all right, Jason Hulse. Uh, I think it's nice that the director wants to make movies with his son and his, his troop of, you know, it seems like in the wrestling movie, there's uh, a lot of the same people, um, which is cool. Uh, there are a lot of false promises in the movie. It's not really a karate movie. What? Um, <laughs> there's not even a lot of Jesse in the movie. <laughs> problem with the movie. Um, hey, hey, the kid punches a couple times. Kicks he the does. He, he does. punches the couch? a couch really hard. <laughs> he helps the floor. Like I said, though, I feel like the real movie is is with Jesse. Like we should be watching Jesse doing things the whole movie, but instead the camera just keeps going over here. To yeah. the mom and following the mom while Jesse's working his ass off to do what he needs to do. We're over here with the mom. Um, so, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's nuts. It, it's, it is like a David Lynch Christmas n- insane thing. I really hope that he keeps making Christmas miracle movies about whatever his son is into. I assume he liked karate. I don't know why they settled on karate instead of wrestling instead of something else. But I, I hope this guy keeps going because yeah. it, it's it's cool. Um, so I'm going to say I'm going to go 81 seasons creamings. Wow. You know, you know, you know Jay, right. since we're kind of on the same page, I think I would rate it slightly higher if it was Jesse, the kid, going to the bar with the uh, the professor. <laughs> I uh, would yeah. follow his progression as he visits <laughs> yeah. the gazebo and stuff. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'd be down. <clears throat> Why not? Yeah. Jesse shows up in other places. <laughs> uh, Paul S. Brooks. 100. 
What? what? It just out of nowhere. The, the Holy slides. shit! You can't. The you gotta build up to that. You can't. You can't just drop that mariachi. I music. did. Wow. One hundred wow. seasons creamings. Oh my god! Wow. It's a Christmas Holy miracle. <laughs> That's that a B movie mania Christmas it is miracle. Oh my elite god! Elite level B movie. It is the type of B movie wow. where you put it on, <laughs> and you are worried that blood is going to shoot out of your nose. <laughs> And that is what I go for, and it finally happened. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, I'm going to have a little more Seasons Cravings for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I cannot argue that. That's cool. <laughs> Mike, what do you, uh, what do you give it? Well, uh... I'm sorry, the, the mariachi music is still going it's, here. It's it is going to be going through the rest of the going. episode. It is, it is interesting that it's still going, and maybe it's because it's a real Christmas B-movie miracle, because in the first time ever in a B-movie mania, we're going to oh get two 100s, motherfucker! This fucking movie! What? This? Oh my god, wow. Let me get my hat back on. Seasons wow. creamings for everyone. Is this is the first time? This is the first time there's been two yeah. 100s. Oh, this wow. movie wow. is... Is I found it just randomly on Tubi. Like, like, uh, really? there's, been a, there's been a small amount of people who have looked it up. If you Google YouTube, there's not many people uh, that have really talked about it. And and I was just flipping through Tubi and like it showed up and I saw I read the description. A son tries to get his dad back from a mass shooting on Christmas, and I went, <laughs> "Holy shit balls! I need to see this." <laughs> and and it turns out. It was the right idea. Yeah. And yep. fuck it. I, like, again, one, raise up the levels again of the mariachi. 100 <laughs> fucking Woo! seasons creamings. Aye, 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 seasons creamings. Wow. That makes uh, three, well, two Christmas movies that have gotten 100s from at least one of us. Wow. Well, not, not the one from last year. No. That got negative points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that was... Who the person who gave it uh, over a hundred um, um, did say it was re negative, like reverse one hundred. So that did give it negative points. <laughs> My score is so low, the memory underflows and goes up to the highest score you can give it, one hundred. Wait, can you just what explain? You, like, have we just, ever had to have an intervention on this podcast? Yeah, I mean, I'll have to go back and listen to the episode again. <laughs> You, the point is, was very trashed, and they did say it was reverse. <laughs> it went through the floor, I believe they said, and yeah, so it yeah. did get negative points. <laughs> the point is, Merry Christmas, everybody, and season's, season's creamings. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! I gotta, I gotta pee. What? It's gonna be great. I gotta great pee. Viewing and you gonna do it listening. on camera? No, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and pee. I'll be right back. It's been a long episode. I know it's a little different on video, but I, I have a bathroom back here. You won't see it. So wait, are we expected to? Should we keep going? What? Are we supposed to keep going? <laughs> yeah, keep, keep going. I'll be back in ten minutes. All right. Can we do that now? Uh, I don't know if we have what? 10 minutes of content left. <laughs> We've got pretty much. Let's just wait for him. Right? Fuck it. Let's just. How you guys doing? <laughs>